Hello everyone, you are watching Republic of Engineers and today's topic is Wave Drag and Shock Wave. Now, Wave Drag is a component of aerodynamic drag caused due to shock waves. But what are shock waves and how are they formed? Like any other waves, shock wave carries energy and can propagate through the medium faster than the speed of sound. It is characterized by abrupt change in density, pressure and temperature of the medium. That is, as fluid flows through a shock wave, the Mach number and velocity decreases. The static pressure and temperature increases along with the increase in density. Sometimes a vapor cone that is visible cloud of condensed water is formed due to instantaneous change in the fluid properties across the shock wave. When a body is in motion, consider an aircraft, it generates sound waves also known as pressure waves which move in all directions. In subsonic speeds that is velocity of the body is less than the velocity of sound, the wavefront generated by the body flows distinctly at the speed of sound. But when a body is in supersonic speed, the speed of the body is greater than the speed of the wavefronts. Thus, the consecutive wavefronts generated by the body do not get sufficient time to flow distinctly. Hence, the consecutive wavefronts superimpose on each other to cause either constructive or destructive interference which is in accordance with the principle of superposition of waves. The constructive interference of pressure or sound waves sums up enormous amount of energy leading to the formation of shock waves. Shock waves are accompanied by sonic booms which release enormous amount of sound energy. This energy is heard in the form of large explosion when the observer is in the region of the Mach cone. What is Mach cone? Consider a body moving in supersonic speed V while emitting sound waves. These waves will progress in all directions with the velocity of sound A. Let the body start moving from the origin. At time t, the sound waves emitted by the body when it was at the origin covers a distance of a t. Also, the body would have covered a distance of v t in the same time interval t. Since the velocity v is greater than a, the body will be outside the region of sound wave. This region behind the body in which sound waves or pressure field is confined at any given time is called a Mach cone and the half angle of the Mach cone is the Mach angle mu. Wave drag is a disadvantageous phenomenon because it is basically a drag. So let us discuss some ways to reduce this type of drag. First, the use of swept wings. Major commercial and military aircrafts use swept wings. When flow analysis is done on swept and straight wings as shown on your screen, it is very apparent that on swept wings the wave drag formed is of lower intensity than straight wings. Second, anti-shock bodies. These bodies which have a pod like structure are placed on the leading or trailing edge of an aircraft's aerodynamic surface to reduce the strike. Third, supercritical airfoils. These airfoils are specially developed to delay the formation of shock waves by the virtue of their shape. Earlier in 1940s, it was not possible for an aircraft to reach the velocity of sound because of wave drag. It was a barrier for the pilots to reach sonic velocity and called it as sound barrier or sonic barrier. Breaking of sound barrier was not possible due to several limitations including propeller efficiency, power of the engine, structural strength of the aircraft body and aerodynamic efficiency of the aircraft. The term sound barrier came into use during World War II when pilots experienced lack of control over control surfaces and face adverse aerodynamic effects like instability and increased drag near the speed of sound. Many attempts were made to break the sound barrier. A few claimed to have broken the sound barrier before the official declaration, but all of them did not meet the definition. It was in Bell X1, 
a rocket engine powered aircraft on October 14, 1947 that Chuck Yeager was officially credited for being the first person to break the sound barrier successfully in a controlled flight. He flew in level flight at an altitude of 45,000 feet. As a result of the X-1's initial supersonic flight, the National Aeronautics Association voted its 1948 Collier Trophy to be shared by the three main participants in the program. Honored at the White House by President Harry S. Truman were Larry Bell for Bell Aircraft, Captain Eager for piloting the flights and John Stack for the NACA contributions. These days, all military fighter jets can break the sound barrier. Now that will be all in this video. Comment below if you have any questions and if you want us to make a video on a particular topic, we'll be happy to help you. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye.